So this is G481 Homework Booklet Question 20. So uh, starts off asking about this piece of tape that's being pulled and, it's exp uh, and we're asked to explain why the tape's most likely to break at point B at this point here. Um, I hope obviously from looking at the diagram at point B we've got the smallest cross-sectional area. You should also be aware that materials break when they reach a certain stress. Now throughout this piece of tape, the whole length of that piece of tape, we've got the same force. So the stress is going to be greatest where we've got the smallest cross-sectional area at point B uh, and therefore that's where it's going to break because that's always going to be where the stress is greatest that's where the ultimate tensile stress is going to be reached first part two we're essentially being asked for the definition of plastic deformation when we go beyond the elastic limit that means we've got showing plastic deformation um, because we've got to explain here rather than just define what that means we need to explain what uh, what that does mean uh, and straightforwardly that we've got a permanent extension and that that extension in other words remains in place when the force when the stress is removed it's really important when we're talking about plastic deformation to get that reference to what's going on when the force is removed part b then uh, we move on to a possible method for determining the young's modulus of metal in the form of a wire and so we've got uh, the wire clamped at one end, we've got a marker. Uh, obviously the wire we're actually experimenting on is the wire between the clamped wooden blocks, the clamps and the marker. The wire there is really, it's just only function is to attach the masses. If we're measuring where the marker is, that's going to be the extension we're going to look at. So what does it ask us? Describe how you can use the apparatus to determine the young modulus of the metal. The sections below should be helpful when writing your answers. These actually, if I just uh, zoom this down, these actually show us very, very standard, useful ways of thinking about any question when you're asked about an experiment. What measurements are we going to take? What measuring devices are we going to make? And then essentially what sums are we going to have to do? So take that back out to a size where we can see what's going on and the measurements we take. So in essence this is the same experiment you did with the two hanging wires in the vernier scale. So what did you have to measure? You had to measure the diameter of the wire and you'll notice we've got the pencil mark um, and it says you should make should use appropriate technical terms spelled correctly and on this occasion you can't get a guess really uh, but it was the word diameter of the wire that they were looking for we need the original length we need the extension and we need the weights that we're putting on uh, so we had to have diameter because that's the one they chose to use for the uh, pencil mark and then we had to have two of the other three notice here um, we've got just bullet points that's all we need uh, and I'd encourage you to do that because it's a good way of kind of keeping an eye on whether or not you're giving an appropriate amount of answer. So second part, what equipment are we going? And again, we've got a pencil mark and micrometer was what we're after. So we're going to use a micrometer to measure the diameter. And really the key here is, the key here is to think about everything I said I was going to measure. So I said I was going to measure the diameter, so let's mention that I'm going to use a micrometer to measure that. I said I was going to measure the original length, let's say we're going to use a steel tape. Again, that is what you did use. We've got to measure the extension. Um, you can simply use the steel tape that's not going to be very accurate and when we did it with the dangling wires we used the vernier scale what they had in the mark scheme here was the idea of using a travelling microscope now a travelling microscope is a microscope essentially with crosshairs in the eyepiece so you can line it up to be uh, focused on a particular object and then you can move it uh, side to side so when you load it up you could have a mark on the wire line those crosshairs up with that mark on the wire and then when you load the wire some more that mark will move and you move the microscope until it's gone that same same until you're looking at that same point again the microscope's got a vernier scale on it so we can use that to measure the positions before and afterwards um, slightly obscure answer in there to be honest i felt when i saw that but using a traveling microscope to measure the extension and then we needed uh, a balance um, or a newton meter to find the weight of the masses. 
Perhaps more realistic, in fact, would be to say that uh, we use known masses and then use mg in order to get the weight. Not good enough just say we've got known masses because obviously it's the force that we're interested in. How would you determine then the Young modulus from the experiments? I think in the exam situation, and uh, luckily enough Kath wrote these out and she picked on the same ones, the easiest way to describe in the exam is not what we did. What we did was we plotted um, a force extension curve and um, by messing around with the equations we saw that the gradient or that we saw that the uh, Young modulus is the gradient of that force extension curve times L over A. That's the easiest way to do the experiment and it taught you something about uh, working with gradients but it's not easiest to describe. By far the easiest way of describing it is to say you calculate stress from force divided by area, you calculate strain from extension over original length and then uh, the Young modulus is the gradient of the stress-strain graph below the elastic limit, and I would—that is the way I'd go in there. Uh, that's the way I'd answer it. On this occasion, you got away with simply saying Young modulus is stress upon strain, but I think the safest way of being confident of getting the mark is to say that the Young modulus is the gradient of the stress-strain graph below the elastic limit on the straight-line section of the graph. So, although at a glance. Uh, this looks like a long, long answer bit of question. Just deal with it with uh, bullet points. Break it down. It's not an eight mark question. It's a uh, three mark up at the top, another three mark, and in fact two mark at the end uh, question. And take the hints. Think very carefully about what the question is asking. Break it down. Don't view it as a big thing. Use bullet points, and suddenly those long answers can actually be relatively straightforward. So that was G four eight one homework booklet question twenty 